All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. Uh, we just finished uh, the newspaper review right now, and I know I see Ezugu Chukudi there with me, and we don't look on the conversations we did there, and we appreciate everybody we did with us for now. Uh, we talked say we get uh, two better interviews based on say today we celebrate the women, and today that Wednesday we're going to talk to two amazing women. But we'll start our first one with uh, one better individual, na Choma Unwosu, and uh, na a mental health advocate. I did talk before say a lot of times in this pandemic a lot of things been shelly, and we like to. Check our mental health and see us. We'll take put everything together. Welcome to the show, uh, Choma, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. All right. All right. So uh, it's a tradition on the show that we always do this. Uh, we always like to ask, honestly, uh, how are you? Because there's a pandemic. We know that a lot of things have changed. The mind of people are unstable. So we like to know, honestly, how are you? I'm, I'm very well. It's been a very tough time for me um, being in the mental health space and mm -hmm. being someone who has also um, gone through mental health conditions too as well. So at first it started with suffering from anxiety um, and then afterwards I had to try to get used to it, you know. Um, my symptoms of my diagnosis also came up and disturbed me at some point, but I think right now I'm good. I'm getting a hang of it. So. Mm. Interesting. I am good. Interesting. It's 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 good to know that you are you're you're getting the hang of it, like you said. So our conversation today yeah. is uh you know mental illness. So you know, but let's even start from the mental health. Uh what exactly is this about? If you can uh explain that in a in a few words. Okay, so um it's a set of conditions that um occur Basically, um, I always say you ask these three questions, and then if these three questions are um, negative, then maybe you might be having or showing symptoms of mental illness. And that can be how am I feeling, or um, how are my emotions, and how is my behavior. So if you have those three in check, when you ask yourself those questions, how am I feeling, how, am I, how is my behavior, and how is my emotion, then chances are that you are you know, you're thriving very well mentally. But then if those questions are negative, then, you know, it's something that you have to look at and say, okay, I may, I may need to seek help or not. Hmm. But basically, you need to seek help, yeah. Okay. And uh, are these uh, illnesses, are they hereditary? Are they things that, okay, you can pass from parent to child? Or are these, uh, are, are these cases that can just happen to you as an individual without it being uh, moved from one generation to another? Um, so I always classify mental illnesses in two categories. They okay. are either biological factors or environmental factors. So biological factors might now consist of hereditary. Um, it might consist of maybe a prenatal defect. Um, it can consist of maybe an injury, a brain injury. Um, then factors can be caused by things like... Um, Maybe being maybe having suffered from domestic violence or some sort of violence at all. Um, maybe you were a victim. Fully. Maybe you come from a home that you know you know wasn't really good and it kind of affected you. So there are different factors that can cause a mental illness. But yes, it, it's some mental illnesses can be passed on from um, a family or from somebody to the next generation. Hmm. or even two generations after. So you can even skip a generation and go to the next generation. Wow. So are there like a specific kinds that can be uh, passed from uh, generations to generations? Or is it that all kind of mental illnesses can move from in... It in, can. In um, all types. So all types. They are specific. So there are some that have been that are caused based on trauma. So, for example, maybe someone caused, um, suffering from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, like that that is not being passed because it's an effect of something that has happened to you maybe in the past um but however um i would say most of the mental illness but then it's not often like it can happen but you know there are other things too that can or there are other things too that can cause a mental health issue to happen as well mm. Okay, so um, that can be a possibility that they can all move from one generation to another, so we can just, just uh, establish that fact. And also, they can be environmentally um, um, in, um, induced in the mind. But 
the next question would be, can this be cured, seeing the fact that it can move from generations to generation, which means it can probably live longer than a lifetime with uh, the individual. So can they be cured? Are they things that uh, you can use to cure mental illnesses? Or are there processes that you, you can use to, to, to let it be cured? Yes, mental illnesses. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, beautiful. So mental Great. illnesses are very treatable. They are very treatable. All you need to do is um, seek the help of a professional, get your assessment, get your diagnosis, and, you know, you can either be put on therapy, you can either be rehabilitated, you can either be put on medication, but yes, it's very, very treatable. Most times, it's, sometimes it can be lifelong, sometimes it might not, but you know, just at least seek help first and then go with the commands of your doctor or your psychiatrist or your psychotherapist. Hmm. So um, speaking about the, the treatment process, let's uh, talk about the treatment process. How does that work? If you can run us through uh, the basic treatment process for this so that people can understand, okay, how long, the duration at which it goes and what it takes, what it entails to, you know, probably undergo that kind of processes. Okay. Well, I'm not a medical doctor, neither am I a psychologist. I studied actually to be a psychologist. Okay. So I, I actually studied engineering in my first degree, but I decided to go do my master's in psychology. Um, I'm also not a psychiatrist. However, uh, I run an NGO okay. that helps, offers mental health services. So I've been doing this for three years, for more than three years now. And um, we have a couple of specialists that work with us okay. um, directly. So basically what we do in uh, my NG is, you know, when someone, we have a helpline, and we have a very well comprehensive website. So okay. when someone calls in or sends a message to us through the live chat, um, we, whoever, the fe mental health first aider listens to the person's case and, you know, either at that point give the person a mental health first aid so obviously maybe somebody who is going through um, a sad moment and needs someone to vent to. So this, this is the point where the mental health first aider has been trained to go through steps that would make the person feel a bit more comfortable after they speak to them. Mm -hmm. um, then afterwards, if we feel like this case has to be escalated, um, and you know, it's something that, because a mental health first aider is just there to do first aid, however. So if a mental health first aider feels that this case needs to be escalated, then we match the the client or the patient to a specialist, to one of our specialists. Mm -hmm. And after you meet with the specialist, you do your assessment. During this assessment, assessment, you're asked a couple of questions. Sometimes it takes really long. I remember that when I first got my diagnosis, it took about an hour for me to finish all the tests I had to do. Okay. And, you know, a couple of questions, uh, it can be even be as crazy as draw a girl and draw it however you feel you can or however you envision it so yeah. if you're a psychologist i'm sure it makes sense to them so but you that you're answering the question you're wondering how does this connect to my problem no it's and then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then you do that and then afterwards um, depending on what you know the results of the assessment says then mm -hmm. you guys can plan that okay um therapy 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 most times are about six weeks um about 40 to one hour every week right and then you have to do like your therapy sessions however um if you have cases that are really really high where you need to be described and um, prescribed some medication maybe you're having like major uh, clinical depression or you're having like suicidal thoughts and ideation and some other mental illnesses that needs medication which is also refers you to the psychiatrist because it's the psychiatrist who can diagnose or prescribe a prescribed drug so then the psychiatrist prescribes the medications and then you have to take medication. Sometimes you have to do medications while doing a um, therapy tour. Hmm. So that's the flow of how yeah. it works. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, we're going to be playing a, a short clip of uh, a, a, a video on how uh, this mental illness uh, can really g get, you know, to when uh, taking over a human being. But uh, let people just watch this and understand the conversation and why we're having this conversation now. So let's check this video out. 
Right, uh, that video now courtesy the Human Rights Watch. And uh, now still about uh, the mental health illness we talk about and how it uh, also has uh, uh, introduced a certain level of stigma. You know, in this part of the world, uh, we've been, uh, we've, we have a different way of seeing things. And uh, um, uh, Dr. Choma, we've been talking about this, and we see it as uh, Nigerians just feel that if you, if, if, if you have a, a mental illness, then it's, it, uh, it's automatically the fact that you are mad. You know, they just take it that way, mm. you know. So a lot of times, people don't seek uh, um, medical help or attention because they feel they would be stigmatized in this manner. So um, as, as, uh, as, as a professional in this, uh, um, in this field, as an advocate for this, what do you have to say to that? Um, well, I always say when I'm asked that question, I feel like I think it's almost a Nigerian thing where um, when we don't know something, we fear it. So it's, it's, it's almost a case of ignorance, but it's an ignorance that you know, needs to be tackled. Um, mental illnesses, okay, I use myself as an example. Okay. I'm, I'm very, very... As, or I look as normal as can be. However, I suffer from bipolar disorder and OCD, um, obsessive compulsive disorder. And these are all types of mental illnesses. Now, I don't, I'm not running on the streets naked or um, have, not having my thoughts properly. I still function very well. And with the help of like my psychiatrist and psychologist, I'm very, I'm thriving. So it's not, it doesn't have to get to the point where you're being locked up in chains and all that. Like, uh, mental illnesses can be in different ranges or different spectrums, you know. It can be as mild as having depression where you don't want to get out of your bed, you don't do the things you normally would enjoy, you know, you, you are realizing that your persistent sadness is beginning to affect the way you feel. And sometimes you even start to think of committing suicide. It can be as much as having anxious thoughts and, you know, consistently worrying till it affects your daily life. And then it can be as bad as, you know, psychosis, you know, at the point where, or mania where, you know, you have to now be, I don't know the reason for being locked, but, you know, to the extreme of schizophrenia where you start to hallucinate and you're becoming very delusional. Mm -hmm. So there are different spectrums and different ranges. And I feel like if people start to understand that mental health issues are very physiological. So the same way you have your malaria or typhoid or cancer, mm -hmm. those illnesses are illnesses of the body. It's the same way you have an illness of the mind too as well. So why don't you want to treat it? If you can treat your malaria and your typhoid, why can't you treat something that affects your mind? It's the same drug you take for malaria and typhoid or going to the hospital to be, um, you know, staying in the hospital so you can get well. It's almost the same process you need to as well when it comes to mental illnesses. So I feel like um, we. We, we fear what we don't know, basically. And that's why people react so much to mental health problems. And, you know, the mind is really, really complicated. Even yeah. the study of the mind is very, very limited. So I guess because the mind hasn't been understood properly or the brain hasn't been understood properly, it's a bit difficult, even for the people who... Um, because I know if you ask a very well-learned scientists to explain what or how the brain functions it will be very difficult for them to explain so i feel like mental health mental illnesses has been explored but it hasn't been explored you know so much for mm -hmm. people to understand how it works and then that's why there's this fear around it but it's it, it's not it's not that serious so <laughs> I, I give myself an example i thrive so um and yeah. i'm here right doing this interview so it's not i don't think it's that much of a big deal it's something that can be treated and can be managed as well yeah, because uh, the reason we're asked that, looking from the video we just saw, uh, we saw people in chains, in shackles, the fact that uh, they had to put them to, in check because they feel, uh, according yeah. to the conversations, they say some of them wander off, some of them are violent, mm -hmm. and uh, they take them away from their family. Now, uh, and judging from what you said, there has to be um, an intense care uh, giving to the individuals, to the victims. but. Now putting people in, a, in a, separating them from people, how does that, does that even help in any way um, cure the situation or, you know, add more uh, uh, pain to the, more damage to the already inflicted situation? Well, I don't think it does any, I, to, to be honest, I think it's more detrimental than it helps. First of all, because these people who you have lost their are very, very aware, right? So it's like, 
saying, like the woman who said that her child has autism and they call her a witch. Yes. That child who is not here. So if you understand everything you're saying, you know, and sometimes baby has been triggered and that's why they become very aggressive or they want something or they're trying to communicate. And there's no other way to communicate than, you know, showing it in that way which seems aggressive to you. So I feel like even with Nigerians, we have to learn to be very non-judgmental about things. And, you know, there are so many ways that you can manage a mental illness rather than tying anybody up in chains. And this can, understanding somebody's condition, understanding their diagnosis might be able to help you to give the person the right help. For example, somebody who is suffering from schizophrenia and is seeing things or hearing things, is likely that this person would start communicating. You're not seeing anything. You there, you're not seeing who this person is talking to or getting angry at, but this person is seeing it because that is what is going on in the person's head. Yeah. So do you feel if you change the person or you hold the person, the person is still going to be seeing everything that they are seeing. And because the person can't even express themselves because they've been bound in chains, the person will become more aggressive. It's almost very synonymous to you're you're adding more more reasons for the person to be triggered so mm. basically it's as easy as just going to the hospital and just getting it sorted there was um recently i think a month ago or two months ago i was speaking to my parents and they, they said something somebody in my village um died and i was like okay what happened and then they said the person you know had a spiritual attack where the person was seeing things and the person would go crazy and the person would see things and i'm like did, this, did they take this person to the hospital? And they're like, no, that they had to take him to the church and all that. And I'm like, what if this person was suffering from schizophrenia or this person was having hallucinations or being delusion? You know, you tagged it before doing the right thing, which is to take the person to the right place of health. You're taking to the person where the person will get prayer and be casted off whatever demons the person is seeing. And you expect this person to survive after all the beatings and the segregations and the discrimination this person too has a mind this person has a soul this person has emotion mm. and you're making it worse so um i don't i don't feel like that's the right way it works while all human beings we all have as much as we might feel and besides what is really normal you know i ask that question normal is very very subjective you know because because this person is not where we are we are we believe that this person is abnormal but what yeah. what is really normal and i think in ourselves all the time true Interesting. Now, where, um, before we wrap this up, well, let's just talk about stigmatization. We touched it a little bit earlier and uh, how it's been a big situation with people not being able to seek for uh, the right help because they'll be scared. They're scared of being stigmatized. Now, let's talk about the people who are probably the family members of these people. On, uh, because a lot of times when uh, this kind of situation happens, they get ab abandoned by the family because the family, they also feel that, eh, not be us, go. they associated with the person with Crazy because that's always the, the the general notion of ah he has a mental <laughs> issue. Man, I'm professing with the Chris. We are not going to be associated with that. So, what would you say to yeah. to the families of these people, and how can they, uh, uh, you know, um, take off that mindset? You know, change the the, the narrative of if the mm -hmm. person is mad, then is the better see safer away from the family than with the yeah. family instead. Yeah. Um, okay. So first of all, like I, as I said, you know. People fear what they don't know. And um, for me, it was my parents, when I had, when I came out with the fact that, you know, first of all, I was suffering depression and, you know, I'm having all these issues. You know, it's hard for them because um, to them, you know, how you, and it's, I guess it was a bit painful for them because since I'm out in the public space, I have to talk about it. You know, I have to tell my story and all that. And it took them a while to get used to. You know, it took people a while. In fact, I, I lost a relationship because the person also found out that, you know, I took the person to the psychiatrist and then afterwards, that was the end of that relationship. So wow. people, people still, yeah, so you, and you wonder because I'm like, things and then it's not really affecting me. So it's still very, there, there's a lot of discrimination around, but I feel like when you educate yourself, when you go to speak to the people who understand, look out, at, look out for people who, have stories to tell. There are a lot of people who are suffering from mental illnesses, whether it's dementia, schizophrenia. There are so many people that have been put in the right condition, who are getting treatment, who are, you know, going through therapy that have gone through it and have come out of it. Um, I even have, um, and I know he wouldn't want me to say his name, however, but this man was a GM in some international oil corporation, and he suffered from depression for years to the extent where he would want to take his life all the time 
and this is somebody who is that high up in the um, what do they call it workspace so if you are able to speak to these people educate yourself ask questions go to your doctor get help help it is is that easy you know i, I keep saying if you can get help for malaria and you can get help for typhoid and you can even get help for diseases that are cancer then mental health illnesses shouldn't be that deep so just once you educate yourself education 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 is key have the right knowledge learn more about it understand why this thing is not so spiritual and it's something that has to do with the mind it's very physiological it's something that happens to let me even tell you let me bust your head right mm -hmm. one in four people suffer from mental illnesses so i always use this um, analysis right now where you are in the studio you count yourself you count for, for the person maybe the the producer the three other people right in front of you one out of you is probably suffering from a mental illness and it might not be that deep it might be something that you know it's just but that's how much it is so in Nigeria, a country of 200 million, million people, there are about 50, people that, 50 million people that are suffering from, or 60 million people that are suffering from mental illness in Nigeria. Hmm. And it's... Well, uh, I think then we're having, basically... okay, we're back. I think That's we're having a little network situation. Yeah. Okay, are, are you with me now? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Yes, yes I, I can am. hear you. All right, good. Yeah, I said one in four suffer from mental illnesses and that's about 60 million nigerians so mm. the moment we start to understand that this issue is very prevalent a lot of people go through it i think maybe that will start to open our eyes to see that this is not something that is so perfect it is not an rainbow wahala this is not something that is away from nigeria that is within us as we see and i guess that you know even our government because i would say something about the coronavirus this coronavirus period. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have all these things where we are doing the whole precautionary thing, wash our hands, keep this amount of distance away, wear your mask and all that. But nobody is talking about the psychological effects of what coronavirus will do. Even our government isn't talking about it. Yes, maybe the Lagos State government is doing well. As I heard that, you know, they brought in some um, therapies to help the people who are going through COVID-19. But people are suffering, suffering from anxiety. There was even um, a statistic that said that there was an increase, a 56% increase in coronavirus-related um, worry and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So even a situation like this would cause post-traumatic stress disorder. I suffered from major um, anxiety during this period, and my OCD is kicking in. I'm waking up washing my hands like 10 times a day, being so compulsive about you know being clean so that I don't catch the virus. And it's affecting a lot of people. So mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be when you're going you know, in our world, in Spain, you're being tied up. That means you have a mental illness. No, it can be as little as things that affect you where you realize that, you know, your your feeling. Interesting. Oh, well, um, I think the network is still giving me a bit of issues there. But uh, okay. I, I believe if you can, are you still there with me? Oh, wow. Uh, well, we still, I think we're uh, experiencing some little bit of network difficulties. Well, like I say, in, uh, it's a new normal. We can't have our guests in the studio because of the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, we have to do this via the internet. And I believe that uh, the conversation has been very, very, very insightful. I was going to ask uh, for some uh, other conversations on that. But I believe that if you still want to know about it, the conversation never stops. You can still go out there, check it out, and get uh, proper knowledge on uh, mental health illnesses. Because the truth is, like she said, it's not always spiritual it's not that uh, you know we always target this in our which they do am not something they do am than why you know they you know they think where they you know they have different kinds of uh, mental illnesses that can actually affect a human being and like she said one in every four nigerian has a mental uh, underlying illness. So it's, uh, we need to check that out also. Those are statistics we did. Uh, well, I believe so the conversation done, they're very, very educative, and I'm sure you've taken one or two things home from that. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.